Rajesh's aim is to give these producers access to markets, technologies and institutional credit, thereby significantly increasing their livelihood. Through Sabra, these salt workers are able to achieve a sense of entitlement. They are also able to see the fruits of their labor as Sabras develops its own strategy to retail salt. So the first time I met Rajesh Bai was actually up on a stage at the Sun Cup Forum. He's one of the finalists and really gave the whole story of the salt pan worker. And I was even more motivated by the fact that he had an innovative model which took salt from the salt pan workers and used that as equity to start the producer company with them. And I just thought that was such an innovative approach and I wanted to know more. And so I put my hand up and asked him if he was looking for funding or support, and really that's how we connected. When we started with uh, Subras, a lot of our work was around thinking how we could bring the cost down of salt production. And so we did a lot of work with them on converting their diesel pumps into solar pumps because there was some funding for renewable energy. And so that was the first place where we did a lot of work. And from that, realized that there was a whole business model here that's a for-profit model where he could really uh, be able to be a trader in the salt and then use some of that to build sustainability in his own organization. So it's transitioned sort of over the years. And there's more in store as well. Rajesh is betting big on the retail side of the business to take Sabras to the next level. As far as the retail part is concerned, talk me through the growth you see on that end because there's actually a lot of potential there if you manage to cut out the middlemen like you said. Yeah, yeah. In fact, what I feel is that you cannot de-intermediate uh, any value chain. The reason is, salt is produced at one place, yeah. consumed somewhere else. So there is going to be a chain. What I think is essential, that you create an enterprise which brings producers, primary producers, closer to the consumer by getting them involved at different stages of value chain. Right. And therefore, Sabras is attempting that. Now, the, today, the the... Uh, the total market on edible market, salt market, 70% is still unorganized. 30% is organized, where we have number of players like Tata's and Hindustan Liver and many others. I feel that we need to come up with salt uh, and reach to the people on two counts. One, the product has to be processed by small people. No other company can say whose salt they are selling. I can so I have a story behind it. I have a people whose, sto whose, uh, whose issues we are talking and bringing it to right. them. Secondly, we would like to also differentiate in terms of uh, uh, the quality of salt. Uh, we are coming up with a salt which is natural. We are not going to uh, go through a large processing unit, but we are going to have decentralized processing centers managed by women's groups. Okay. And we would be having uh, packed them uh, in Sabra's uh, brand. Uh, bags and all that and that is we are going to bring to the market. So our differentiation is in terms of who is producing it, how are we produce, processing it and what is the product. Okay. So all three differentiations we are doing. Okay, so salt is one part of it and are there any other plans you have as well on the retail front? Uh, retail front, more than retail front, I, we, would, we are looking at a possibility of servicing large uh, number of salt producers through other services like financial services, uh, access to market information, uh, health services, education services. So those are the things which I would like to bring it on that side. As far as the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the consumers are concerned, apart from the retail edible salt, I would like to go into byproducts of salt. Okay. Uh, because a uh, number of other products are possible which are industrial, has an industrial and agricultural. So is that where you see a lot of the potential going exactly. forward in terms exactly. of revenue? Exactly. In fact, it's a huge potential. But I think we have started with basic uh, thing on retail so as well as give, give me a sense of the projections in terms of, uh, you know, for this part of the project as well. Well, we are looking at in coming five years. Uh, today, our top line is only 60 lakhs right. annual. Uh, we would like to grow to 30 crore in coming five in years. In five years. Yes, in five years. We would be servicing about 1,000 salt producers with solar pumps mm -hmm. and about one and a half lakh uh, uh, K, uh, metric ton of uh, salt for retail. So these are the two broad uh, uh, sort of right. parameters that we have kept. Okay. Uh, our, our hope is to make another amul of salt. I think that's the vision that we have. And I'm very sure we will be able to do that.